My name is Pastor Sam Velez. I'm the executive pastor here at Iglesia Cristiana Misericordia. God has a specific word for you. Open up your heart and get ready to receive. Seeing eternity. Me and you have to understand that in this life, we are not living for the life that we're living right now. If you think about it, we're not living for earth. We're living for heaven. This is not the final thing. This is not the end of all. You can have whatever you want in this life, but at the end of the day, me and you are living for heaven. We're living for eternity. That is why when we give our lives to Jesus, eternity is ours. That is why we celebrate heaven. That's why we promote it. That's why we want people to know Jesus so they can, they can be with Jesus forever. That is why when we say stuff like when someone passes on and they die, rest in peace is because we believe that there is peace in heaven. There is peace. The Bible describes heaven as a place that is, there is no pain, there is no sickness, there is no crying, there is none of that. It's a place of wholeness, a place of healing, a place of peace. In June 2020, this past June 2020, there was a man, I was reading this story, there was a man by the name of Forrest Fenn. And Forrest Fenn, 10 years ago, in the Rocky Mountains, he hid a million dollar of treasure. Millions of dollars in treasure in the Rocky Mountains. And they found it this past June. What he did was he hid it and he would leave online clues for people to find it. So people, literally there were people that quit their jobs to dedicate themselves to going to the Rocky Mountains and finding this buried treasure because this man buried millions of dollars in treasure and you can look this up and he and they finally found it and I share this story with you because me and you if we found out there was treasure in Laredo there would be a lot of people going everywhere if someone said there's treasure in Los Botines we would all be there all right we would be going to those ranches finding treasure all right because here's the thing we understand that in gold and in treasure, there is something valuable about it. So we're willing to do whatever to get it. That's why we like movies with pirates, because pirates want to do whatever they can for the buried treasure. Ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean? There is something about treasure that triggers people to do whatever they can because they understand the value of it. And I'm here to open up this collection of talk because we have to understand something. If we want to live with an eternal perspective, we have to value God. We have to value God. We need to find the value that it is in him. Because we find out many people are chasing dreams. They're chasing more money. They're chasing more houses. They're chasing better jobs. People are chasing fame. They're chasing approval. We are constantly chasing a lot of different things only to find ourselves empty at the end of the day. We're dissatisfied. We think that if I have this, then I'll feel better about that. If I had a better job, then I would, be, I would feel a lot better than I am right now. If I had, uh, I don't know, six more kids, I would feel better. If I, you know, we, we have this mindset sometimes that if we had things, we'd feel better. And that is the problem sometimes, church, is that we place our value in things and not in a person. We place our value in things because we think we need it when really, really it's a want. We don't, we, here's the thing. We don't have to have a million dollars to be happy. I don't know if you got that. It would be great, right? Right? If my, if my joy and my value is found in a million dollars, if that's what's going to make me happy, then I've missed the point. If, if, if it's because if you, it's like, oh, if, it's, if I go here, if I do that, if, if I think in my, if my rest is in those things, then I've missed the point. I'm doing exactly what everybody else, I'm chasing something that really, really at the end of the day has no value. It's valuable here on earth, but that's not what's going to satisfy me. There's a lot of people that are broken because they kept chasing things 
that wasn't what God intended for them. And they're broken, they're hurt, they're dissatisfied because they're chasing the wrong things. So as we open up this series, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to be in verses 44 through 46. Matthew 13, 44 through 46 says this. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. He went and he sold, and he sold everything and he, said, he had, and the Bible says, and he bought it. You have to understand something. When Jesus is talking, he's using this parable. During that time, people understood what he was saying because during that time, it was very, very common for people to bury things. It was very, very common. If you were someone of wealth and you were going out of town or you knew you were going to die, you would bury things so no one can take it because back then there was no formal banks. It wasn't like, I'm going to put my investment or I'm going to put this amount of money and these people are going to take care of it. No, no. So they would bury things. And so Jesus is using this parable because he's trying to get them to understand what really, really matters most. Because Pharisees at that time, he was really trying to get to the Pharisees because the, very, the, Pharisees, the Pharisees valued position. They valued power. They valued money. They valued religion. They valued the wrong things. And because they valued the wrong things, what they would do is they would put the pressure on the people to value the same things. So you have a bunch of people valuing things instead of God. Valuing things instead of valuing their relationship with God, instead of the kingdom of heaven. They were valuing things. They were valuing positions. They were valuing, they wanted more power. People had a wrong sense of value. And so Jesus addresses the people with this story. And he tells them about what the kingdom of heaven is like. What is it like? The title of my message is today is Treasure Hunt. It's called treasure hunt. We've been, we've been on this treasure hunt for a long time. And we're constantly looking for things that we think are going to add value to us. And here's the thing. It's not wrong to have things, okay? It's not wrong to buy things. It's not wrong to add things. But are, if you are doing that to add value to yourself, you've missed the point. You've missed the point. If you're taking notes, if we're going to have this eternal perspective, if we're going to have a perspective of heaven, then we have to understand that what we value determines our experiences. What we value determines our experiences. We all love a good experience, whether it's a concert, whether it's a camping trip, whether it's a vacation, whether it's just you went to the ranch with your family, whether you ate a good restaurant and you gained 30 pounds, we all value good experiences because experiences leave marks on our lives. I remember when I was a kid, um, we, I used to be in this thing called Royal Rangers, all right? <laughs> Some people know what I'm talking about, but if you didn't, it's basically Boy Scouts for Christians. If that's the simplest way I can put it. All right. Honestly, I, I thought about buying cap. I found a catalog that has those caps. I want to buy one. But um, and and Royal Rangers. We I remember when I was a kid, we used to go camping, these different camping trips, and they were called powwows and camparama and all these other things. And I remember there was this one time. I don't even remember the the place. I don't know if we were like by Uvalde or we were we were somewhere. All right, we were out there. All right, we were out there somewhere. And one of the days, there was like this cliff that you can jump into the lake. And it was kind of high. Well, at least for me as a kid, it looked, it felt very, very high. And I remember that at first, like, you couldn't jump off of those cliffs. But then they started letting people jump off. I'll never forget the thrill and the experience of running. You had to go really, you had to stay back and run hard and jump off a cliff. Have you ever done, you ever done that before, anybody? Jump off cliffs to the water? 
All right, you need to get out more. All right, <laughs> go camping. And so, I remember that moment. I, rem- I remember that experience because it, it was a thrill. Was it right? I don't know. Could we have got her in trouble? Probably. I mean, it was a long time ago. I'm sure nowadays people get sued. But, you know, I remember those moments because experiences leave a mark in you. There are experiences in your life that have marked you. You can look back and you can be like, man, I remember this moment. I remember when I met this person. I remember when we did this. I remember, you know, there are experiences in our lives that mark us forever. And we will continue in this life to experience different things. But the reality is, is as I was talking about this, is what we value determines our experience. And what I mean is this, is that our lives are going to continue to be filled with experiences. But what we experience will come by what we value. What me and you are going to live through is going to come by what we value. If you value money more than you value your family, then you're always going to experience emptiness in your home. You're going to experience division. You're going to experience problems. If you experience or if you value toxic people, you're always going to experience a toxic life. But what you value, it matters. Because that is what you're going to experience. It's kind of like, have you ever seen the movie Hook, the Peter Pan? Anybody remember that movie? What was the biggest problem with Robin Williams at the beginning? He valued what? His job over his kids. What happened? He missed the baseball game of his son because of what contracts, because of work. He barely even wanted to go back and visit Wendy because what he valued. And so many times we're like that, where if we're not careful, we begin to value these other things and then in result experience negative things. And, 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 and it's not even, here's the thing, you have to get to a place where you have to understand where does my value come from? What do I need to place priority in? Because when we learn to change our priorities, so will our life. By changing priorities, by changing things that we value. Jesus says this in Matthew 6, 19 through 21. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, then your heart will be also. Church, when the kingdom is valued least, when God is valued least, that is where you will find the lack most. That is where you're going to find lack. When God is valued least, you will find lack most. When God is valued least, that is where you're going to lack peace. That's where you're going to lack strength. That is where where you're going to lack wisdom because you have chosen to value other things instead of valuing God. You have chosen. When the kingdom, when God is valued least, that is where you find lack most. So you have to ask yourself the question, what am I really, really valuing? And has God been on the shelf for a long time? Because I decided to chase other things. I decided to chase temporary things that mean nothing for my eternity. I decided that's why we have to be careful about what we value. If you're in this room and you've been lacking peace, have you thought about, man, have I been valuing God in these moments? The Bible says, again, in verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field when a man found it, he hid it again, and then in joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. I love this because the Bible describes the joy he had when he found the treasure. When he found 
what mattered most. Many people are lacking joy because they, found, they are trying to find it in things, again, more than in the person of Jesus. Church, God is the most important thing to us. And it might sound repetitive and you might feel like, well, I've known that all my life, but it also reveals in your actions how you go about it. You want joy? Go back to finding joy in him. Because Jesus is enough. The Old Testament bulls and goats were the only sacrifices that would appease sin temporarily. But when Jesus came to the picture, it was finished. Jesus was fully God and fully man. He was man enough to pay the price and God enough to fulfill the promise. If that is Jesus to me and you. Jesus is what we need most. Jesus has to be our priority. Jesus has to be the very thing that's going to give me joy before a person can give me joy. Jesus has to be the very person that I go to when I need healing, when I need, when I need to, to prosper, when I need wisdom. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. He's enough, church. He's enough. He's not the person that I go to when I'm in my lowest moments. He's not the person that I find only on Sundays. I can find them at midnight. I can find them throughout the day. I can find them when I'm driving. I can find them, but it has to be Jesus. When Jesus is priority, when Jesus is center, that is where we find life. Amen. Yes, you can clap your hands. Bible says that the, this young man, what does he do? He says that he sold, he with joy went and he sold all he had and bought that field. This man, when he realized what he found, he was willing to give everything away because he understood what he was about to gain. Which leads me to my second point is that my reward is in my surrender. My reward is in my surrender. So the question you need to ask yourself is, what needs to go in your life? If you're saying, man, I I value eternity. I want peace for my life. I want change. I want my family to be blessed. What needs to go? Is it meetings? Is it less hours? Is it actually going on a vacation with your family and not taking work with you? Is that, you know what, I know we're in quarantine family, but you know what, let's walk together at North Central. I don't know. But what needs to go? Is it people? Is it an attitude? What needs to, what do we need to surrender to gain the reward? What needs to go? And that's a question that I cannot answer to you. That is a question that is you, between you and God. Because the Holy Spirit is going to convict you. And if you don't know by this point, you are blind. But there are moments that you know, man, I need to stop this. I need to let go of this. Some of you in this room, you are one step away from a breakthrough. But the problem is you can't let go of what God's asking you to let go of. You're one step away from God doing some amazing things, but because you cannot let go, you're bound. You're bound by it because you're not willing to surrender it. You're not willing to let it go. And for some of us, maybe we don't know what needs to go is because we just don't know. We don't know what God is asking us. We don't know. Maybe you're new to Christianity or you're new to this whole Jesus thing. And you're like, I mean, I love Jesus and, and, and I want to be more like him. And I do want my life to change. But maybe you, you, you don't know what are the things that you got to let go of. If you, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go Hosea 4, 6 really quick. It says, it says, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. 
since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. This is Hosea talking. In other words, whatever you are ignorant in is an error you will also suffer, you will also suffer in. Whatever you are ignorant in, ignorant in is an error you will also suffer in. In more modern terms, you can be enjoying what's killing you. In other words, you could be enjoying what is actually killing you. See, the problem in this story, when Hosea is talking, it wasn't that the people didn't have the information. They just had misinformation. It wasn't that they didn't understand where to get info. They just had the wrong one. And church, if our lives, if we are not chasing God and we are not chasing his word, we'll never know what to do. And in fact, we, were, we will actually be killing ourselves little by little. There are things that have to go and you might enjoy them now, but they're not worth it. Whatever area you're ignorant, you will also suffer in as well. And I, and I bring this up because we have to understand, church, that this book, the word of God is available not just for knowledge, but for your life. You will not know what to surrender until you know his word. You will not know what to surrender until you know his word. And if you do know his word and you haven't surrendered, then that is your fault. No one else is tying your hands together but you. No one else is bounding you but you. And I bring this up, church, because we need to know. That's why the word of God is there to guide us. The Bible says it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That's why the word of God is there when we are needing wisdom and it's there. When we are broken, it's there. When we are hurting, it's there. When we just need some sort of fresh word from God, it is there. It is there. It's available to you. And if you do have a Bible, can I tell you something? Don't just read that book to finish. Read to feed. Some of us are reading to finish instead of reading to feed. There's a difference. Some of you are some, on some Bible plans and all you're trying to do is finish the week instead of trying to feed your soul. Because when I come to read the Bible, I'm trying to feed myself. I'm trying to grow. I'm asking God, God, show me the things that need to change. God, help me to change them. God, give me wisdom. It's not just so I can say, I read the Bible in a year. You read to feed. Let me tell you something. If you are reading to feed, you will not starve. If you've been starving up to this point, it's because you've been trying to finish and not trying to learn, not trying to change. You're trying to get knowledge, but the knowledge is going to go into your soul. Church, if we can practice these things, can I tell you, your life is going to be a lot better. Your life is going to change. I guarantee you. It might not be from one night to the next, okay? Pastor Sam said, I need a feed. I read another thing. No, no. Relax. In the words of Aaron Rodgers, relax. But we read to feed. Church, as we kick off this, these collections of talks, it is because it's important that we understand what God values. Because what God values, I have to value. If you actually valued God, it would also help you in your voting, if you didn't know that. And I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. But I am telling you, vote what values to God. I didn't come here to represent a party. I don't care about parties, to be completely honest with you. I care about what God cares about. I care about what's most important. 
And this isn't just about voting. It's the last thing I want you to worry about. This is about life. This is about your family. This is about your sons and your daughters. This is about your soul. Maybe you're in this place and you feel heavy and you feel like, Pastor Sam, I'm, I've been trying to do this and I feel like I'm in this constant just routine and this circle and this cycle that just, uh, I want to pray for you because I believe God can break cycles. I believe God can heal wounds. Maybe there are things that are still hurting you from two years ago and God wants to heal it. You can stand. The Bible says that this man uses, Jesus uses two examples. The one that had joy when he found it he sold everything because he wanted to gain that. And there was the, per the merchant that found the, the pearl. And again, what did he do? He sells everything because he valued it. They both have something in common. And it's what I just talked about. It's surrender. They, they let go of everything they stopped, they sold so that they can gain what they needed most. With your eyes closed, I want to pray with you. As we begin this series, this is just the appetizer for the rest of the month. But I, I, my prayer is that God would heal you. My prayer is that your values would change. My prayer is that your family would prosper that your businesses would prosper, that you would prosper as an individual, that you would prosper. But it all starts and ends with a surrender. A you giving up your right, your pride, your flesh, so that God can lead you. Lord, church, we're chasing eternity because eternity is what matters most. That's what matters. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were encouraged and challenged through God's word. If you've never received Christ as your savior, today's the day. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, God, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior. This was your first time. You've made the greatest decision ever. If you're new or you've never been to our church, every single Sunday we have service just for you at 9 a.m. We'll see you there.